Hello and welcome to the ninth video in my Horus Heresy Legions video series. In this video we're going to be painting the very, very angry World Eaters. So to start off we've got our model here and we've primed it in Dark Flesh Tone from Vallejo Gamer and we've added some scratches into the armour before we primed it to add a bit of battle damage. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to spray chipping medium all over the armour through the airbrush and then leave it to dry for about five to six minutes then we're going to use liquitex titanium white ink and just spray that all over the model for our nice white bright armor i would like to point out that i aggressively declogged my vallejo game color magic blue all over the wet palette as you can see in the back there we're going to use that paint and we're going to paint it in the shoulder pads and maybe a knee pad or two once that's dried we're going to move on to the chipping so as you can see here as we're using the brush and we're applying water to the model it's chipping away that top layer of paint back down to that dark flesh tone underneath and use different tools to create the chipping. Just go around the model, chip away as you need to and create a nice, some nice effects. Next up, we're going to paint any armor trim with Pro Acryl Rich Gold. And then we're going to paint any other metallics with Citadel Lead Voucher. After that, we're going to paint the gun casings in black. I'm using Vallejo Model Color Black. And we're also going to paint any armor seals in black too. At this point, all of our base coats are done. I don't have any World Eater transfers, but if you did, I would suggest putting those on before you do the chipping. Moving on, we're going to give the model a coat with Vallejo Matte Varnish. And then we're going to give the model a coat with MIG Streaking Grime. And we use MIG because it's got a better colour consistency than AK Interactive. And if you don't want to use the airbrush here, you can just paint it on with a brush and it works exactly the same. We're going to reduce the grime down now so you take a cotton bud and you load it up with some enamel thinner and then you just roll it across the model i want to show that the white is still white rather than brown so we're going to really get in there and remove quite a lot of the grime from like the central pieces of the armor to show that it is white armor afterwards we're going to come in with a dry cotton bud i'm going to roll it over and mop up any excess grime and you can even reduce the grime even more with this dry cotton bud we're going to paint some dark streaking grime onto areas like the shoulder trim, uh, maybe some little streaks here and there on the armor. Again, I want to keep the armor white here. We don't want to turn it into like a green color with the dark streaking grime, but a few spodges here and there helps to add some variation. Anywhere that we go too hard, we're going to remove with a cotton bud. If you want to remove even more, you can go back over it with enamel thinner on a cotton bud and just knock it back. We're going to add some MIG streaking rust now to any metal armor sections. And then just go over that with a cotton bud. And whilst that's still wet, we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange. And we're just going to dab that onto any of the metal areas that we want to make rusty. This is going to create like a bright rust effect, which contrasts nicely with the streaking rust. And it beads up so it's not just a solid color over the area. I've dried the model off now with a hot hairdryer. And I'm going to add some more definition in by using MIG Black Enamel Wash. And we're just going to put this into any recesses, any joints in the armor, any rivets around those. It goes quite nicely if you just apply quite a thick coat over the gold. It tones the gold down and makes it quite like, gives it a nice grimy feel. This paint flows really nicely into any recesses in the armor. So it's great for loading up some armor joints to panel line them. For a simple way to do the eyes, we're going to paint the sockets with lead belcher and then we're just going to use Blood Angels red contrast paint and just paint that into the socket over the top. For the base, I'm going for my usual muddy base, so we're using Vallejo European Thick Mud, apply a coat of that over the whole base of the model, add some little scale modelling bricks, add on some scale modelling barbed wire. A 
few dabs of dark streaking grime on the bricks. Some dirty down rust onto the barbed wire. And then I'm going to spatter the whole base with some dark streaking grime from MIG. And some Kursk soil again from MIG. It wouldn't be a world eater without some blood spatter, so we're using Blood Angels Red contrast paint on a paintbrush and just going to spatter that across the model. Experiment a little bit with having the airbrush and the paintbrush different distances away from each other and from the model, so you get different thicknesses of paint spray on the model. Make sure you get some on the base there as well, it adds to the effect. And the red really goes nicely over the white armor. Last things to do, we're going to clean up the base rim using some enamel thinner. And once that's dried, we're going to paint it in black. And there we have it. There is our very angry world eater with his nice bloody chainsword. I'm really enjoying this video series. I uh, hope you are too. I haven't decided yet which legion I'm going to be doing next. So I'm going to put a poll up in the next couple of days. So if there's a specific legion that you would like to see next, please go and vote on that and we'll do whichever one gets the most votes. Thank you very much for watching everyone. See you in the next one.